some of the most impactful work on these global issues, on these issues that will bring humanity together, can happen and start right at home, and they can start right away with young people. And so I'll leave it there and just finish off with three main messages that I talked about in this presentation. The first is that while every single one of you will have tremendous ideas for how you can go out and change the world around you, those ideas as, as intentions of what you want to achieve are not enough. You need to dive in and ask those tough questions and figure out where it's going to fail and really be willing to adapt that approach over a, over a long amount of time. And the first idea that you have is probably not the right one. And so you have to realize that you have to pursue that idea while at the same time keeping in the back of your mind that there's a chance that it's wrong and that you'll need to change it. The second is, an, is a message specific to international development. And that's aid, which is the application of money and talent from richer countries to poorer countries, can work. And some of you have probably heard a little bit about uh, of various people in, in the press over the last few months really challenging whether or not aid works. I think what they're seeing is that in many cases it hasn't worked as well as we've wanted it to. But that's not that it doesn't work. It does. But we have to be very thoughtful about it. And we have to understand that change is difficult and that being able to dive into the issues and really engage with, with people locally is what's going to drive that change. And that leads to the third, which is that change really starts at home. And I would say, and even more so, it starts with young people. Young people are the ones who change societies. Young people are the ones who create political will. Young people are the ones who throw out the ideas that create real change. And I'll finish just by showing you a set of pictures that I think reinforces all three of these points very, very well. Now, this immediate photo that you see up here is probably fairly unremarkable. It's flashing on the screen in front of you. But if I click once, I'm just going to zoom in on the front, the foreground of this photo to show you a few things that are fairly remarkable. The first that I'll zoom in on is in the foreground of this pot cooking on a three-stone fire. And this was taken in rural Ghana, and you could have probably taken this photo 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, with pots cooking in exactly the same way. In the middle ground, you see a fairly young guy. He's about 25 years old on the left there of the photo. And you can't see it so well, but in his hand, in his left hand, he has a tie rod that he's actually bringing over to the fire to heat up because he wants to just change the, change the shape of the metal on the end. And that tie rod is coming from a project that he in this village implemented himself, which was a grain processing machine. And he's coming over to the fire to change the shape of the end because he needs to fix it, and he knows how to fix it himself. And he implemented this machine because he knew that it was going to save people time and be able to build more prosperity in this village. And he's driving change within his village. Perhaps the most interesting part, if I click once more, is the photo right at the background. And you can probably just barely see it. But it's a television. And there's two really young guys, they're about 18 years old, who are standing by the television. And when I was in this village, what I saw was these two young guys this one evening ride up with this television strapped to the back of their bicycle. And one, there were two bicycles, in fact. This one guy had the television and a DVD player. And then the second bicycle had two or three car batteries. And what they did was they came into this compound and they set the television up in the back with a DVD player. They attached it to the car batteries so that it would have electricity in this very rural area of Ghana. And that evening, they showed movies and they got people to pay a small fee, five cents or 10 cents, to attend and watch these videos in rural Ghana. And I thought to myself, this entire picture, if I think about it, the foreground of the rocks and the fire cooking the same way that they would have cooked for a few hundred years, 
the tie rod in the middle of the ground, which is technology that's been around for quite a few years, but they've driven out themselves. And these two young kids who are entrepreneurs in the background, showing videos, making a living for themselves, providing great entertainment to these communities. That to me is what represents all of those aspects of, of change that can exist in societies, that can be driven by people locally, and that all of you can, can really help catalyze and drive in your lives and in, in whatever areas that you are passionate about. And the one lesson that we've certainly taken with Engineers Without Borders over the years is that if you're passionate about something, if you care about it, if you think hard about it and work on it and are dedicated to it, you and any individual can create tremendous change. So I'll leave you with those thoughts and I'll thank you for having me at this amazing conference. Well, George, uh, just an, an absolutely overwhelming presentation with some very, very important messages for our young participants here. And first, I'd like to say, uh, to make forget, uh, on behalf of all the participants here, uh, the instructors and program coordinators, on behalf of the World Genesis Foundation, as well as the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, we really want to thank you for your time and commitment to delivering this message. And uh, just thank you again so much. Oh, thank you so much, David. It's great to be here, and I'm, I'm really excited about all the wonderful things that uh, the 400 young people and everyone else watching are going to be able to, to go do after this conference. Well, I look forward to it as well. And maybe just one parting question. Uh, again, most of the students here, they've given up their opportunity for vacations at the shore and the mountains with friends, and they decided to come to this remote wilderness area, this little island in the middle of the Danube Delta near the Black Sea to study and learn. They're very, very serious about um, uh, their part in the world and creating change and, and ideas that work, uh, uh, much along the vision of Engineers Without Borders. As they begin their adult life careers, have you any, any personal advice to them um, if we're to, uh, you know, that you would suggest to them to help them uh, guide them or lead them to success in their lives that you'd like to share before we close out this call? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, when I think back to my early 20s, and this was about 10 years ago now for me when I graduated university, and I think back to all of the things that were going on in my life. And in fact, when I graduated, all the pressures that were being put on me. Just, just remembering back to that is, is in many ways overwhelming because I had pressures from my parents and my friends who were going off to very high paying jobs that, uh, that you know, almost guaranteed success in life. Um, I had professors wanting me to come back and do a master's or a PhD. I had all of these people who were applying great pressures and, and society as well, things that I saw in the world that, that suggested what success was and what a successful life was. And, and it can be quite overwhelming. And even by showing up and coming to this great institute, I think all of you who are watching this have already resisted some of those pressures. You've said that actually it's more important for me to think about how I can contribute to changing the world than it is for me to be relaxing at, a, uh, at my house or on a beach or at a summer camp or something along those lines. And so you've already started resisting those pressures. And I would say that those pressures will only build over the years. And so my advice and what I have tried to follow throughout my life is to say, given all of that, given all of those pressures, try your hardest and keep focused on this notion of, of what you're feeling during this week, of the change that you see that's possible, and of that great desire, that overriding desire in your life to work on problems that actually matter in the world, rather than just following along with these pressures. Um, and, and some of them are very real and they're necessary. You know, make a living for your, yourself, be able to raise a family. But at the same time, keep in your mind this opportunity that there is to really work on things that matter in the world and keep that front and center as you're making your decisions about what to do and where to do it. 
And that can happen, you know, in a nonprofit like Engineers Without Borders. It can also happen in government service. It can also happen in the private sector. But, but please, really, keep working on problems that matter. Well, George, uh, I, I think with the words and the inspiration you left behind, I, I think you've touched a lot of people and a lot of young minds about the importance of focusing on the global good and better helping people lead the lives that they value. And I want to thank you again. It was an incredible commitment and time that you invested into supporting the UNESCO program here this year. We wish you and your family and Engineers Without Borders all the best success in the year to come, and we hope we'll be speaking again very soon. Thank you so much again. Okay, all the best. Bye for now.